This three-legged robot could one day be hopping across the surface of asteroids and searching for valuable minerals. Known as the Space Hopper, the bot was recently put to the test on a zero-gravity aircraft flight. The Space Hopper program was first launched two and a half years ago, as a student research project at ETH Zurich University in Switzerland. It's aimed at addressing the challenge of efficiently exploring low-gravity celestial bodies such as asteroids and moons. Not only might such bodies contain much-needed substances like rare earth metals, they could also help scientists better understand the formation of the universe. In its current form, the Spacehopper robot consists of a triangular aerospace aluminum body with an articulated leg at each corner. Each of those three legs in turn has a knee and a hip joint. Two motors move the hip via a differential drive mechanism and another motor moves the knee. Onboard deep learning-based software controls the combined movements of the legs, allowing the robot to perform a series of specific functions. These functions include initiating hops, keeping the bot's body correctly oriented while in flight, and performing controlled landings at predetermined locations. All nine leg motors work together to launch the space hopper high off the asteroid's surface when jumping. As the robot is subsequently in flight, it maintains its upright orientation by selectively extending or withdrawing its legs to shift its center of mass as needed. Upon landing, its legs flex to absorb impact and to keep the bot from falling over. Initial tests of these functions were performed in an ETH Zurich lab, where the robot was attached to a counterweight and a spinning gimbal to simulate the low-gravity conditions of the dwarf planet series. Late last year however, members of the student team got to take the space hopper on an Air Zero-G parabolic flight hosted by the European Space Agency and French company Novespace. In these kinds of flights, an Airbus A310 airliner flies in a series of upward and downward arcs, producing short periods of weightlessness within the plane as it does so. During the 2023 flight, the robot repeatedly jumped off the floor of the aircraft, in a specific direction, and kept itself correctly oriented once airborne. If you're trying to distribute environmental sensors over a wide area by dropping them from a drone, you definitely don't want them all landing in the same place. In order to keep that from happening, University of Washington scientists have created tiny origami microflyers. About the size of a large postage stamp and weighing just 414 milligrams, each microflyer has a flat, flexible, square body to which various electronic components are attached. The latter include things like a microcontroller, Bluetooth chip, solar power harvesting circuit, and pressure sensor. Utilizing a leaf-inspired type of origami known as Miyuraori, each flyer's body is folded in such a fashion that it can pop back and forth between two states or shapes in just 25 milliseconds. When the body is simply folded out flat, the microflyer tumbles chaotically through the air as it falls, much like an elm leaf would do. This flight pattern allows it to cover a long horizontal distance on its way down, it can travel up to 98 meters if dropped from an altitude of 40 meters in a light breeze. When the microflyer's body is folded inwards, however, the device gently falls straight down, more like a maple leaf. Therefore, by getting individual flyers within one dropped batch to change from one state to another at different times, it's possible to have some traveling far out to the sides of the drop area, with others going right towards the center. Each device changes state via an onboard electromagnetic actuator, which is in turn triggered by either the pressure sensor, when a certain altitude is reached, the Bluetooth chip, when an activation signal is received, or a timer in the microcontroller. The Bluetooth chip can also transmit recorded data. Importantly, all of the electronics are powered by the solar circuit, no batteries are required. And a variety of environmental sensors could certainly be added. While the current prototypes aren't biodegradable, the team is working on developing microflyers that are, so they won't just indefinitely remain in the environment after being deployed. Sorting trash is one of those tasks that people can get pretty tired of, plus it can be hazardous. That's why Zen Robotics makes robots that do the job. The company's latest generation is particularly trash savvy, as it can identify over 500 types of waste. Since we first heard about Zen Robotics back in 2011, its robots had yet to enter commercial service. Fast forward to 2024, and the company has just announced its fourth generation of the technology called Zen Robotics 4.0. This incarnation is a particularly big step beyond its predecessors. 
The basic idea with the robots is that they be set up in units known as cells, along waste feed conveyor belts in municipal waste plants, factories, or elsewhere. As objects made of wood, plastic, metal, glass or whatnot pass by, the robot's AI-based object recognition system identifies each type of material. The bot's grasper then reaches in, seizes the object, and sets it in its designated bin. Previously, there was a single object recognition system that single-handedly did the material's identification for all of the cells along one sorting line. In Zen Robotics 4.0 however, each cell has its own compact ZenBrain AI setup. This change enhances precision and efficiency by 60 to 100% over previous generations. Buyers can actually choose between two robots, the Heavy Picker 4.0 and the Fast Picker 4.0. The heavy picker is capable of sorting items weighing up to 88 pounds each, making up to 2,300 picks per hour. That may sound pretty speedy, but the fast picker has it beat, at a rate of 4,800 picks per hour, however, it has a maximum lifting capacity of 1 kilogram or 2.2 pounds. Zen Robotics suggests that along one waste stream, the heavy pickers could start by sorting all the heavy trash, leaving the smaller stuff for the fast pickers located downstream. If time is an issue, the system can be set to spot and sort the most valuable materials first, to ensure they don't get missed. This land-crawling robot was designed by a team at the University of Notre Dame. At the base of the remote control device is a 3D printed rigid polymer body which incorporates an electronic control unit, a multi-sensor module, and a battery. Attached to that body via swiveling polymer connectors are four flexible molded silicone flippers. Each of those appendages is independently activated, with the two large front flippers providing propulsion over sand or other surfaces, and the small rear flippers used to steer, they work sort of like a couple of rudders. The robot's gait can be adapted for optimum performance over various types of terrain, and incorporates what are described as the most effective aspects of different locomotion patterns employed by different species of sea turtles. And while the bot has been developed mainly to gain a better understanding of how turtle-style locomotion could be applied to human technology, it is hoped that a future version of the device could be used to help newly hatched baby sea turtles quickly find their way to the ocean. Such hatchlings can be led astray by litter on the beach or the lights from nearby streets and buildings, leaving them exposed to terrestrial predators such as seagulls. By hopping like a person on a pogo stick, this modified aerial drone can operate for almost an hour as opposed to several minutes if it simply flew. Descendants of this aircraft could one day find use in applications such as wildlife monitoring, crop inspection, or search and rescue. Appropriately named the Hopcopter, the device was created by a team of scientists from Hong Kong. It takes the form of a small commercially available Crazyfly quadcopter with an elastomer band loaded rubber tipped leg mounted in a frame on its underside. When hopping isn't an option, the hopcopter can still fly like a regular multi rotor drone. In order to save battery power though, it can also accelerate downward, spring loading the leg upon impact with the ground, then rapidly rebound both vertically and horizontally. During the rebound phase, little if any motor use is required. By adjusting the angle at which its leg meets the ground, the drone can control the direction in which it rebounds. The leg isn't limited to use on horizontally level surfaces. If the drone needs to make a sudden high-speed turn, for instance, it can simply fly leg first into a sloping or vertical surface, such as a wall, rapidly deflecting itself in the desired direction. Making such fast, sharp turns in regular flight mode would be impossible. In indoor tests, the hopcopter managed an average hopping speed of 2.38 meters per second at an average jump height of 1.63 meter. And more importantly, it was able to keep running for 50 minutes per battery charge, in regular flight mode, it could go for only 6 minutes. Most robots use electric actuators, but this little fella, packs a lot more punch. Researchers have created a new type of minuscule combustion engine that gives this tiny frog robot explosive leaping abilities, as well as fine movement control. The idea of a robot running on combustion fuel seems very last century, but as a team from Cornell University's Organic Robotics Lab points out, today's batteries are heavy and they don't carry much energy, so there are limits on how much performance you can get out of electric actuators. 
Those limits are a lot higher if you switch to energy-dense chemical fuels, so the team set about designing a fascinating new type of rapid, high-frequency robotic actuator that runs a lot like a regular combustion engine. Somewhere around 5 mm in diameter, these tiny actuators accept methane and oxygen into a simple 0.09 ml combustion chamber and light it up with a spark. And they loaded it up with 32 grams of cargo weight, more than 22 times the robot's own body weight, and showed they could still control its movement. At the end of it all, these little actuators could give roboticists a handy extra option when super quick movements are required. While farmers have to perform a number of difficult tasks, tending to the grain stored inside grain bins is particularly arduous, not to mention dangerous. That's where the Grain Weevil Grain Bin Management Robot is designed to come in. First of all, why do farmers even have to go into the bins? Well, for one thing, the piled up grain needs to periodically be leveled in order to maintain good airflow. Crusts and bridges that form on its surface also have to be broken up, plus grain that accumulates along the walls must be pulled down. Finally, when the grain is being removed from the bin, it needs to be pushed into an extraction auger. Going into the bins and manually shoveling the grain is not only a hot and difficult job, it also poses risks such as getting trapped or buried in the grain, getting caught in the auger, and developing lung disease from breathing in grain dust. With these dangers in mind, a farmer friend of father and son duo Chad and Ben Johnson challenged the two to create a robot that could do the job. Their response to the challenge is a robot known as the Grain Weevil. Measuring approximately 20 by 20 inches and tipping the scales at 50 pounds, the square body bot redistributes stored grain by moving through it on two motorized augers. One 20-minute charge of its battery is good for 90 minutes to two hours of use. The robot works about as fast as a person with a shovel and is remotely controlled with human-initiated autonomy, that means it runs movement patterns on its own, but a human operator still makes the main decisions. It is hoped that by the end of this summer the robot will be level 2 autonomous, performing all tasks while the farmer simply supervises. In cramped spacecraft or space stations, there typically isn't room to store multiple robots that are each designed for a specific task. The Mori 3 system was designed with that fact in mind, as it can be used to create different types of robots as needed. The Mori 3 setup consists of multiple flat triangular modules equipped with electronics, such as motors, batteries and sensors, and mechanical coupling mechanisms. In a process known as polygon meshing, groups of these modules can be joined together along the edges, forming a single three-dimensional polygon-shaped robot. The size and configuration of that polygon varies, depending on the task for which the robot is required. Among other things, it can walk on four legs, form itself into a robotic arm, or roll like a wheel. Additionally, multiple such robots can connect to one another if necessary, temporarily forming into a single larger robot. Due to their unique way of moving through the water, jellyfish are frequently used as inspiration for soft, water-based robots. Now, researchers have discovered that the flapping propulsion system of a robotic jellyfish is not only good for movement, but it can also draw small bits of debris up from the ocean floor without any contact. Such a robot could be useful for removing trash from delicate ocean environments, like coral reefs. The new robots, invented by scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems, are about the size of a hand and consist of a series of six actuators filled with artificial muscles known as hazels. These muscles are basically oil-filled sacs covered by electrodes. When the electrodes receive a current, they become filled with a positive charge. They then discharge the current to the surrounding, negatively charged ocean water. This cycle drives the oil in the bags to get pushed back and forth, causing the actuators to execute their flapping movement. Most significantly, the flapping movement creates a current in the water that can draw particles upward, more or less mimicking the way a plunger draws clogs from a drain. The robots are nearly silent which, combined with their touch-free approach, makes them an environmentally sensitive tool that could be applied in various situations. 
while the jellyfish bot can do its ocean housekeeping without actually grabbing anything, the researchers were, in fact, able to demonstrate that the robot could execute grasping motions when two of the actuators were brought towards each other in a pincer gesture. They also showed that two robots could work together to lift a more complicated item, like a face mask, from the ocean floor. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has created a self-propelled, autonomous robot snake designed to explore extreme extraterrestrial terrain. Its first-of-a-kind propulsion system means it can boldly go where no robot snake has gone before. The robotic snake is called an Exobiology Extant Life Surveyor, or EELS, and was inspired by a desire to look for life deep in Saturn's icy moon Enceladus. The current iteration of EELS is 4 meters long and weighs about 220 pounds. Its 10 identical, rotating segments use screw heads for propulsion and grip. The EELS team have experimented with different screws for use in different terrains, 3D printed plastic screws for looser terrain and sharper metal screws for ice. The team has tested EELS using a snowy robot playground at a Southern Californian ski resort, at an indoor ice rink, and in sandy terrain. Because they've entered new territory with EELS, the testing process has been instructional. Given the communication lag between Earth and deep space, EELS ability to operate autonomously is important. If it runs into a problem, it needs to be able to recover on its own without relying on human assistance. EELS final form will contain 48 little actuators that will provide more flexibility. Many have built-in force torque sensing, which will enable EELS to feel how much pressure it's exerting on the terrain. This will help it to navigate uneven surfaces in narrow spaces much like a rock climber does, shimmying upward or downward by pushing against opposing walls. EELS adaptability means that, aside from Enceladus, the robot snake can be used to explore Mars polar caps, or deep icy crevasses on our own planet. Still, it's some time till EELS will be slithering across the terrain of other planets. Scientists hope the robot will be complete by fall next year, however it's then expected to be a decade-long wait for a spacecraft to taxi eels to Enceladus. <laughs>